Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, you don't know this one? Let's try it again, okay? Join me. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? All right, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> now, when I was a little boy, that was one of my favorite Christmas songs, one of my favorite Christmas shows. And I remember one particular Christmas Eve when my sister and I, we drove my mother crazy because we sang that song, Rudolph, over and over and over again on the way back from church to the house. 10.6 miles of Rudolph. <laughs> I also remember that Christmas because it was the first Christmas that we had twinkle lights on the tree. Now, some of you will remember the switch over because up to that point, we had those old fashioned screw in bulbs. The one that you put onto the tree, the ones if you touch them, you burn your fingers, remember? It was great for kids for Christmas. And this particular year, dad finally broke down and he bought the white twinkle lights. And we even splurged. We bought an angel for the top of the tree. It looked like it had a strand of those white twinkle lights inside the angel. And so the angel was lighted from the inside out. So we got home from church and my sister and I stopped by the kitchen to raid the cookies. And then we heard from the living room, my mother screaming. And so we both, with our cookies, ran into the living room. And there was Leo, our cat, who had climbed the tree, chewing on the angel. My mom was screaming, stop the cat. My, my dad just stood there like this. And he said, let the cat learn a very important lesson, which was his parenting style too. And with that, the cat bit into this wire and a flash of light occurred and then the entire string of lights fizzled and the cat went flying from the top of the tree and landed on baby Jesus. <laughs> it was wonderful. And I'm not sure who was more surprised, the cat or the sweet baby Jesus. The electrical jolt had caused all the twinkle lights to short out and the cat walked around for two days looking like Don King, <laughs> the old boxing promoter. And the cat stayed very far away from the tree. My sister and I thought that that was the coolest Christmas ever. <laughs> but now we are staring at a dark tree because not a single light is on. That's when my dad went to work. He found out how to replace a small fuse and a few of the broken lights and magically it was fixed and all the twinkle lights came back on. It was great. As a little boy, again and again, my parents taught my sister and I that when something gets broken, when something goes wrong, it can often be fixed if you just don't give up on it and you keep on trying. Well, the scriptures for Christmas tell us that something was wrong not with a string of lights. Something was wrong with the world, and God finds a way to fix it. God doesn't need a sleigh or to fall off the top of a tree to come down and make things right. What God needed was a courageous young girl named Mary. Now, what was wrong? According to the scriptures, God had created human beings in the divine image. And he creates us in a divine image so that we can be like God, so that we can live in harmony and peace. We can live in harmony and peace with the world that God has made, with each other and with God. And for a while, according to the scriptures, that is in fact how we live, loving God and loving our neighbor. But then we start making bad choices. We start becoming self-centered, selfish. We pay less attention to the God who made us, and we don't listen to God when we are making decisions. And according to the scriptures, something goes wrong. We call it sin in our tradition. Sin happens and we become separated. 
we feel separated from God, distanced from each other, and disconnected from this beautiful world that God has made. Something was wrong, something was broken, and God finds a way to fix it. God finds a way to come down, if you will, and set things right. God comes to us not riding in a sleigh, but lying in a manger. In effect, if you read the stories of the birth of Christ, God says, I will come to my people. I will love them. I will heal them. I will comfort them. I will lead them. And in the person of Jesus, I will eat with them. I will dance with them and I will cry with them. I will let them know that there is no darkness in the world that is stronger than my light. There's no fear more powerful than my love. There's no death stronger than my life. In order to fix what was broken, God comes down to be with us right here, to be right here with us. God with us. That's what the word Emmanuel means. God with us. God as one of us. God in the flesh. He comes down to make things right, to heal the hurts, to restore the peace. And so a virgin conceives, and she bears a son, and Jesus is born in Bethlehem. She wraps him in swaddling clothes, and she lays him in a manger. Mary and Joseph are amazed. The shepherds rejoice, and the angels sing. As our first reading from the prophet Isaiah said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And we have seen a great light, because finally, God has shown us that we will never be alone that God is always near. God has shown us in the person of Jesus Christ that God is always with us. And through Jesus, we can once again live in harmony with God, with each other, with ourselves, and with God's world. Something had been wrong, but God makes it right. Not through a fuse or a light bulb, but through a stable in David's city, Jesus is born. Now we come together this Christmas day because the scriptures assures us that there is a reason for all of us to be here today. And that reason is this, there is still something wrong in us and in our world, and only one person can fix it. We still haven't fully learned to live the lesson that Jesus came to teach us. And so we still experience this harmony. There's still something wrong today. How do I know? Well, it's because some children in our world will go to bed hungry tonight. Some children won't sleep well because they live near violence. Some adults won't sleep well because they're worried about their families. Some are soldiers in Ukraine and the Middle East. Some are police officers worried and concerned about our safety. There is something broken. Some people are sad. Some families are feuding. Some of us are lonely. We are thinking about the people we love whom we have lost. Some are addicted. Some are struggling with illness. Some of us are feeling disconnected from God disconnected from life, disconnected from hope. Some of us are not very merry this Christmas. And I think in some way, for each of us, for each person, there is something in life that still feels a bit wrong, that needs healing. For, um, for almost every person, there is a brokenness that needs hope. That's why we need this Christmas Mass every year. We need to hear the good news of the Christmas Gospel, to know that Christ is born, to know that Christ dwells within us, to know that God came into the world to give us hope and to give us peace. 
which nothing can take away from us. Christmas is a repetition of God's promise. And God's promise is this, God is very near. As near as a child being held by a mother. And so I say, thank God for Christmas. Thank God for the healing and the hope that Christmas brings. Thank God for the good news that comes from Bethlehem. And thank God for the Eucharist. The Eucharist is this celebration in which we have a chance to touch and to taste our Savior again. We don't need a sleigh. We have a sacrament. And in this sacrament, God comes to us and abides with us again and again. And we can rise with him again and again, rise with him to the heavenly banquet, where all is well, where all is calm, where all is bright. Merry Christmas.